Toi tu te mana wenua me te mana moana. All the presenters uh, of this next presentation are of te whānau o Inekeu, te aitanga amate, te whānau o Rākairoa, e Ngāti Pro Descent. He taina tuakana mātau o ngā whānau apu nō raro i te maru o ngā maunga o kōkai o tokatea. Our speakers for this session support, coordinate and lead kaupapa taiao environmental focused work and hold research, trustee and capability development roles within the Wano and Hapu. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause for Toi Tute Mana, Wenua Mite Mana Moana. Uh, so, yeah, we've titled our kōrero today, Toitu Te Mana Whenua Me Te Mana Mōna. Um, we want to share, I don't know, we might be overstating it because likely a room full of the converted here, but um, research lesson number one, don't assume people on the same page as you, especially in research. So we want to share insights in working with hapu uh, and supporting hapu uh, aspirations and research. Even for ourselves as hapu people, we, we also need these things as well. Um, so yesterday, you know, there's a big focus on environmental, social and economic considerations that the challenge is supporting through research. Uh, so to, to reiterate, working with Māori and, and, their, and hapu whānau and their research aspirations um, we probably start at the spiritual and cultural uh, considerations that have been um, amazingly shared with us uh, today and from our, from our Māori presenters yesterday. I see why you were getting mixed up on this kura, taihoa. So he whakatauki tēnei nā tomato tipuna a uh, haukotore. Go out until the only landmark you see are the peaks of Hukurangi Maunga. There is a fishing ground there. It is far off. You will travel a great distance before you arrive there. And um, as our tungane has more than eloquently expressed uh, one of our oral traditions, um, they equip us and inform us with the essentials for us to continue as mana whenua. Um, and we also take these forward into our governance of our moana. So for those of you who don't know where we are, uh, we're on the east coast of North Island, north of Tūranga Niākiwa. Te aitanga mate, te whāna hinekehu, me te whāna rākairoa, we we are the hapu territories between Ruatoria and Tapuya Springs. Um, the middle map is how our marae are, are arranged in Ngāti Parau. They're about 48 to 50. So you can assume there's a hapu where every marae is there. And the hapu that we've worked with in this kaipapa have been Whariponga and located at Whariponga and Waipuro. Those are the black and um, blue marae on the map. And so mana whenua, mana moana, Auntie Egg will um, cover a bit off around the Ngārohe Moana Act um, that Ngāti Parau is currently, that hapu of Ngāti Parau are currently activating. Um, and you'll see a direct correlation into what informed us negotiating and um, leading out with that kaupapa. I probably don't need a mic. So it's within that context that the hapu went into direct negotiations with the Crown and we, because we always knew we owned our foreshore, we always knew we owned the mauna, just like we own the land. So we, we created a very unique piece of legislation around Ngārohe mauna and that's that map where you see all the blue part. 
So the, we started a conversation with the crowd in 2003, and it got to 2019, and we got an act of parliament called Ngā Rohe Mōno Ngā Hapo Ngāti Prau. So we have a legislative framework that is really unique in this country to manage our Rohe Mōna. Um, and the big thing about the legislation is the Toy 2 principles. Essentially, that's what the Crown says the Toy 2 principles are. Real bald head, but really affirming, <laughs> really affirming in terms of their obligation and their relationship to us going forward. All our pakeke who signed the deed of agreement and uh, supported this legislation, they didn't do it because of those bald head words. They did it because they understood the ihi, the wehe, and all that conversation that came before with all those wonderful Māori speakers about what toi tu to mana means in all of its, all of its realms. So that's me. Kia ora. <laughs> Anything successful in Ngātipurō is intergenerational and you'd think Auntie was the impact player but actually she's all of it and we just try and keep up with her way at the back. Um, so getting some more specifics about the actual research that was uh, invested in by the, by the challenge. Huataikina o hapue. Huataikina is a term that traditionally we use to... Um, it spoke of the abundance of our tonga and rawa in our environment, and that premised our ability to be thriving as whānau and as hapu. Uh, we don't need to go into the multiple stresses in our tile now and the tipping points that we face, both on the whenua and in our mōna. Um, today we use it as a call, really, to get together, sort ourselves out, and me pēhe te whakatutuki, how are we going to rebalance our taio so that we can continue as mana whenua in our place. Um, and so those uh, elements, me key, are what the research focused on. Uh, part research partnerships, underpinning that is the relationships that we had to have in place or had to grow to enable our research to support hapu aspirations, developing capability and capacity development. Sarah Jane is a um, main example of that. Um, um, we brought her in about halfway through. She was available to become, uh, to be a part of the research, and, and that's in a research uh, assistant type capability. But very quickly, the hapu has told her. Luckily, she's agreed. She's going to be running um, a four-year program for us um, in about 2025. 20, um, and everything we've tried to do, like like the Afi Mai Afi Atu Kopapa has has illustrated, we're trying to develop capacity right throughout. Matauranga um, Ngāti I know there's a big focus on integrating Matauranga Māori, Miki and Western science. You know, and just a note, when we use quite specific like Matauranga Ngāti or Matauranga Ahapu, it's not to really point out the difference, it's really beholding us to be specific and those specificities um, actually mean something when you got to actually implement or work with people. Uh, we had an in moana work stream which involved dive surveys. Um, Ian Ruru is part of our team. So we were the ones that asked him to recalibrate his Māori compass for marine taonga. Um, so we've been able, we have been actually impacted a lot trying to um, test that just because whenever we go out to the moana it's always, it's brown actually with all the sedimentation and, and all of that. Um, but, but we have been able to do progress something there. And then, um, ideally, the hapu want to continue monitoring, or, yeah, continue their monitoring efforts beyond the research, um, which is a whole other issue that we don't have time to get into. And that um, developing a state of the rohe moana is framed up by Modi and mana and all the things that we've talked about today, not, not just methods and numbers. Th those are important, but anyway. Um, 
And, and so an example of that is, if you go back to that whakatauki I had before, yeah, I'm diverging here, my crew will be <laughs> looking at me. This came up in the Wananga earlier this year. Um, one of our papas, the mantis fisherman, is probably looking at us sideways saying, have you guys been to that Taungaika? And, well, we haven't. Um, so, you know, he's like, man, I've got to hand over everything to you lot, and you haven't even been out there. My kids are going, oh, mama, can we go out to that Taungaika? Um, you know, I said, oh, I don't actually know where to go, but I have been given a role in govern helping to govern our mana moana. And then if you take someone like Auntie Yag, she's claiming a um, right to the EEZ based on this whakatauki. So these are the divergent understandings we have with our taonga tukuiho, that at the hapu level we've got to pui pui, manicure, you know, and manaki into, into places that not just the fishing, also the interfaces with policy and legislation, that's what the hapu is having to do, let alone bringing in a research overlay as well. So when research can be really fine-tuned to the hapu aspirations, it's more helpful and we can actually get some, you know, some good tools to do the do. The last thing was decision-making and policy. Um, the toy two principles that Auntie introduced, they're like the, the alpha and omega for us, sort of. You know, it's the why we do it, what we're doing, me peer here, te whakatutuki, all of that. And even if we were to measure our progress, they'd be along those, those toitu te mana principles. Um, and so we're going to finish on te pao tangaro, which was actually something that Auntie Egg and another whanaunga developed back in 2012 to help us develop our customary fisheries plans. So... There's been a big gap between implement, uh, getting the act up and going, but that's been the main job for our hapu in the last year, year or two, is developing customary fisheries plans. So Sarah Jane's going to finish us off talking a bit about that um, uh, framework. Oh, electric shock. Um, yeah, so te pao tangaroa. Um, what is it? Um, it's a framework that's been developed um, to the structure of our marae kainga. Um, in the framework, significant parts of the pa represent focus areas um, in strate strategic planning and decision making um, in relation to customary fisheries, fisheries in Awarohe Moana. Um, Yeah, so I guess some examples of that is um, the kōruru, which is like the figurehead that sits on the top of the whare. Um, that is representation of our vision and our mission statements. Um, the tāhuhu, we've got our Modi statement as that. And um, the three po that hold up the tāhuhu and the whare um, are representative of um, our three strategic objectives around sustainability, fisheries management, and um, building capability and capacity. Oh, yeah. um, why have we developed it this way? Um, it's hapu inclusive, um, and it's used to inform, guide, and record whānau hapu contributions. Um, it, en it enables our um, holistic way of thinking and articulates our personal goals and aspirations based on our unique worldview. Um, continuously guided by um, te reo me Ngāti Kangaake o Ngāti Purau, and it acknowledges the um, interconnectedness of the moana to the whenua and um, ourselves as tangata whenua. Um, we as hapu and whānau are able to record whakapapa, kōrero tukuiho, and incorporate te reo ake me Ngāti Ngāti Purau as a valid body of knowledge alongside policy and science and informing and planning. 
just going to finish this off. Um, so essentially for Ngāhapō and Ngāti Pro, we're working backwards because it's, it's actually all around the toitu. We've got the, we've got the benefit of the traditional knowledge and practice and it's been um, wrapped up in legislation. But as hapu and whānau, we don't have enough capacity and capability and that's where the sustainable seas and any other research actually helps us do. So we got, we got resource, we got legislation, but we don't quite have enough oomph. And we just want to leave you with some words uh, of pearls from old um, my guru, uh, Ganesh Nana, when he, came to, um, when he came to Gisborne, and just before he took up the productivity commissioner's role, he left us with a conversation around... Um, eh? about well-being, and he, now he talked about the economy, and I want to talk about this because of the blue economy conversation. And so I thought, Jesus, well, I must be from Whadabunga. Because what he said is, um, he started his conversation about what is an economy. He said, to, in order to talk about an economy, you have to first define what an economy is. And he said, it's your tonga, it's your maunga, it's your, it's your awa, it's your mona, it's your peeps. I said, he's definitely from Whadabunga. <laughs> and then he said to us, if you have an economy that cannot look after your tonga, that is not an economy worth having. And he said it has to be done in the context of well-being. And so even in the productivity of this country, it's still within the context of well-being. And he defined well-being as you have to have three things. You have to have access. So all your researchers and all your people with lots of boots, make sure everyone has access. In order to, after you have access, you can then become a participant. And after you become a participant, you can become a contributor. And when we're in Whanapunga, we have all of those things because we end up with a well-being that is around, uh, we have a sense of prosperity and, and a sense of belonging and shared prosperity. And that is what Ganesh says, so he's definitely from Whanapunga. Kia ora, thank you. <laughs>